All right, welcome to episode six of this Outdoor Kitchen Project. And today we are at Tile Outlets of America. Uh, you pick up the product over there, they put it in your truck. I'll show you the inside of this place, which is just amazing. If you remember from episode one, we were able to find the exact same ledger uh, stone that is in the house, and we're gonna put it uh, every place that makes sense out there on the patio. Um, we actually, last week, brought uh, half the order home. They had to order part of it. And then uh, this week, I was able to get by there and pick up the rest of the order. Uh, only half the order fits in my truck at a time, I'll show you that. Um, but in the front, uh, this is how they sell the uh, other style of the same exact silver travertine. It's sold in you know some little square footage bundle, a little shrink-wrapped bundle. And uh, the other great thing about this place is you can return anything you want, pretty much. As long as it's not used uh, or damaged, they can take it back and they're really really cooperative about that uh, back here in the corner I wanted to show you the stone that we're using on the very top uh, this is how they sell it there's all different colors and shapes uh, they have pencil tiles and I don't actually know exactly what this thing is called uh, but the bottom of it I hold it upside down here for a second but the bottom is actually thicker than the ledger tile so it's gonna look really great it'll provide a nice cap that's the way it'll be installed and I can 45 degree cut this around the top of the columns. So I think it's gonna look really good. Uh, here I just wanted to give you a quick look at just how huge and amazing this tile store is. If you need flooring uh, or wall tile or whatever, I highly, highly recommend them. Here's the product in the uh, back of the truck and I'll put the video right up here uh, for the sumo springs that I put in and I'm always grateful that I did that uh, because it really helps with heavier loads in a compact truck like this Tacoma. So here's me loading the first uh, shipment, I guess, or first truckload of this ledger tile. And I managed to just, I'm just filling up the patio. It's really making for a cramped workspace. Uh, so I also took a little bit of time this week to return some product that I didn't use. All that concrete board over there on the left and a bunch of, uh, of aluminum tubing and then also some uh, pressure treated wood that I didn't use. I took all that back to Home Depot to free up some space. And here you can see I couldn't resist. I went out fishing. I actually went out fishing with my daughter's boyfriend. Uh, he, uh, if he didn't ask to go fishing, I probably wouldn't have fished and I really had a good time. Uh, so I'm always happy when uh, people ask. And here's the fish I caught, nice red fish. Uh, so it was a pretty good day. Uh, I was getting roaches over in the corner and I went ahead and filled this all in with foam. Once the foam is cured, I'll go ahead and saw it off even. Uh, but I think that's where that was going through. So I went ahead and banged out just little, little extra projects here and there. And then uh, these stools that I bought, I got them on Amazon used. So if you've ever bought anything on Amazon used, it's really great. You, you find the product you want and then you uh, scroll down and uh, sometimes there's some amazing deals. With this particular stool, uh, they were like $118, I think, and I got them for $49. Uh, there's a couple little blemishes, and uh, and they were too too tall, so I had to cut the legs off. Uh, but they, uh, they're I think they're going to be great. Um, and if they're not, well, it was only $50, uh, so I can you know give them away. Uh, I am going to stain them darker. I bought some carbonized gray stain, so we'll see what that looks like. And whenever you put this stuff together, uh, the directions don't call for it, but I always recommend gluing it. Also, it just makes it super sturdy. And yes, I am doing this on our beautiful travertine floors, which I will uh, go ahead and put in the uh, right above here. We had them refinished. So if you want to check out that video, a uh, really neat process refinishing these floors. Uh, and it's just wood glue, so it wiped up and my wife wasn't home. So you got to sand down the edges. You can see I've got a clamp there. I did blow out one of them. Um, and I glued it back on, you'll never see it, and sand off the edges, and then I took the little feet off the original stool legs and just put them back on uh, the new cut length, and of course I glued them also so they don't accidentally fall out, and then somebody steps on them, which would be just awful. So next up, I had to deal with uh, this center island thing. Uh, I had to get it in the right place because uh, the electrical, we're going to run electrical to it. It would just be wrong not to. So I had to just make absolutely sure where I want it and really go through the thought process of figuring out how I'm going to install it. 
And uh, once I got the stools in there and I made sure that it's a, a, the right distance from the grill and the right distance from the column, because I've mentioned before we walk through there constantly. Once I was sold on the position, I went ahead and started the process of pulling up these pavers, which is just tedious. Uh, once you get one out, then the other ones come out easier, but I need to run a wire under and then up the uh, support leg for this center island. Uh, so I didn't actually run the wire, uh, but I am doing all of that before the electrical is finished off. And uh, this is what it looks like with those stools in place. And uh, here's a quick view of just where that wire is going to run. All I'm going to do is drill a hole in the uh, concrete that I poured for the base. I'll do, I didn't get to it this week, uh, but I'll put um, PVC pipe through there. Uh, to run it underground, and then uh, there'll just be a little box there that converts it from the uh, metal-coated uh, electrical wire, conduit, whatever, to the uh, rubberized, suitable for underground wire, um, and, and I'll show you that. Uh, anyway, this is the point that I'm at. Uh, I think there's plenty of room in between the grill and the center island and the center island and the wall there. Uh, it, it'll look really good and uh, when I finally do put this thing together I'm very challenged on the slope uh, of the of the deck because I'm gonna have to pour little footers for it that are perfectly level because the whole thing slants the weather did not cooperate you know Florida there's a blue spot and then it's crappy over there and it would start raining literally every hour so I really couldn't pull the tools out and really get to much of anything in a couple videos, uh, somebody, somebody, a couple of you put comments on a close-up of the way that this aluminum went together. Uh, so I figure I'd just give you a little close-up. It's just these little angles, and they get screwed together, and you can see that sometimes there's a space, sometimes there isn't a space uh, between the two beams. Sometimes the little uh, L brackets are perfectly uh, flat, and I got them perfect, and sometimes I didn't. Uh, those holes there will be covered in silicone when the granite goes in, uh, but it's super solid and you really don't need to worry about these little imperfections like that. Uh, it, it's not going anywhere. Uh, certainly it wouldn't be good enough for a screen enclosure if people were you know, looking at it, but it's all going to be covered and it's very, very solid. So um, I'm not at all concerned. And then this is a close up of how they bolt into the ground. Here's the faucet that we selected. It's a Delta Touch faucet, very chunky stainless steel. I think it'll look really good with the grill. And we went with the Touch faucet because it is a little bit of a reach alongside of the grill there. And uh, this would just be easier to just touch it on and off. You set the valve at the temperature that you wanted. Uh, and the thing is battery controlled, which is a little irritating to me. I wish it was 110 with a little converter of some sort, but they say the batteries last a year and they supplied batteries, but I don't ever use these types of batteries. I buy these batteries, the Encore uh, or N-Loop batteries. They're Panasonic, rechargeable. I do that for two reasons. One, uh, they do last a very long time. We use them in our locks. And the other thing, they don't leak like foam after you leave them for a year and ruin whatever it is they're in. This is the uh, door that I'm debating on using. I still can't decide. Uh, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave it in the, uh, leave it in the comments because I'm really interested in what you think. Um, my plan is to lay this out in the sun for several weeks and let it silver. Uh, this is teak, and if you have any experience with teak, it gets this beautiful silver color if you don't uh, finish it or oil it. And I think that silver color will look really great with the stainless and with the stone that we chose. So here, let me get a couple pieces of this stone uh, and I'll put them over here next to the thing. And you'll just have to imagine that the, um, that the door has turned silver. Uh, and then combine that hey, good with those stools being even darker. Now, if I wanted to spend some more money, I could probably get uh, in fact, if these doors silver up, and I really love it, maybe we'll buy teak stools and let them silver up, and then the stools would match the doors perfectly. That may be a, a really neat look. We'll just have to see. But 
The other thing about these doors is they're louvered, so it provides just ample ventilation if there was ever a propane leak or, you know, to let heat in and out or, or airflow. Uh, so we'll see. The door is a little bit smaller uh, height-wise than what I wanted. Ideally, it would be bigger. And then I'm also debating just leaving it open. Uh, I really just can't decide. But these doors do happen to be a perfect fit. Um, you can see the width there. I mean, it is absolutely perfect. And the more I kind of look at it and imagine, the more I think weathered silver teak stools would probably look really friggin' good. Um, you can see it's almost full width, uh, very little uh, framing to, to deal with to take up space. And, um, you know, the only thing, the only apprehension is it, it is a little restricting. You know, the door is not. Uh, as high as I would like it to be. Uh, but there's a good look of what it'll look like. The ledger on the left and the um, you know flat stone on the front. This is the granite choice right here. It's very, very common. And the other nice thing about this granite is it... Let me go outside and I'll show you what I mean. It has uh, the ability to hide seams. So, oops. So this is going to be uh, just a bunch of pieces. And let me show you what I mean. Um, unfortunately, the side burner is not in the right position, but there'll be a piece of granite that's about this wide right here. There'll be a piece of granite here. There'll be a piece of granite right back here. And there's gonna be a seam, probably here or here here, there's going to be seams everywhere. And that style of granite uh, really, really hides the seams well. This piece will obviously be a solid piece. This will be a solid piece. But just for, uh, just so you can visualize it, that will be the color uh, of the granite that will go everywhere. I think it's gonna look really nice. A couple reasons why, why I'm thinking about doing this, uh, this teak thing. Um, first off, it, uh, I think it might be too much stainless. I, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I think it might be too much stainless to look at all the way across. The alfresco doors are on back order for at least 18 weeks, and that's what I started to explore other options. And even from the beginning, the very first drawing in the very first episode, if you remember, I had them open uh, because I had that done with my old kitchen, I had this open space and I really liked it. I just really, I just can't decide. Uh, so I started exploring this teak option and then the stool option, and I'm really just spitballing. This is my process of deciding what's gonna look best. And eventually, it either just comes to me, somebody has an idea that I go with, uh, or you know, I just land on something that ends up pretty nice. Uh, so original doors are on back order. Uh, not sure if I want to leave it open and can't really decide on this whole teak, stool, weathered thing. Uh, so if you have an opinion on any of that, I'm very, very interested. Please leave it in the comments. Um, this coming week is Thanksgiving, so I'm not likely to get a lot done this week also. And we're going to the Keys this weekend, so I'm pretty excited about that. And maybe I'll even shoot a Keys video. We've, we're actually uh, flying to the Keys, uh, which takes about 30 minutes. And it's really much more affordable than you'd think if you're taking a large group uh, based on you know the price of airfare right now. So maybe I'll do a video on that and share that experience uh, with everyone. Also, you're gonna notice at the end of this video, I have developed a new uh, intro and I am going to be changing the channel name. I'm probably gonna put that in a video all of its own to explain what happened, but uh, somebody is offered to buy the copyright YOLO photos and the domain and um, why I copyrighted that. I, I don't really know. It was just kind of like a challenge. Can I copyright this? Uh, I've had it for about 10 years. The original name of this channel was Bobby GFL. That's my name, Bobby G, and I live in Florida. So that's how I came up with that. And it was really just a channel to share. There we go, my alarm just went off. It was really just a channel to share uh, family, fo family stuff uh, with, with family that wasn't really tech savvy and they could just watch a YouTube video and made it very easy. Uh, and then it turned into this photography thing, which Yellow Photos 
Uh, that name came up, my kids actually came up with that name. And uh, it's been YOLO Photos ever since, but the channel is really nothing about photography anymore. It's all about projects and stuff. And uh, so it, it probably is a good idea to rebrand the channel. Uh, but like I said, I think I'm gonna do a completely separate video on that to explain what's happening. But I thought, since this is the first video since this whole thing happened, um, I resurrected an intro and kind of modified it uh, from earlier on in the channel's history. And I'm gonna play it now. So we'll see, uh, let me know what you think of it. And um, I think in the next couple weeks, uh, there might be a complete channel change uh, and we'll just go from there. Anyway, Kind of a off topic, a uh, little ending here, but thanks as always for watching. Please leave comments. I love reading and replying to all my comments and uh, I look forward to uh, posting a video next week. So see you soon. Thanks.